Okay, this is Tammy Crawford, and today we're going to do a watercolor of a picture of Black Butte. Black Butte, is, this is a picture my husband took when we were on one of our four-wheeler rides. It's one of the, this mountain shape is one of the shapes you can see of the mountains from a distance from lots of different places across the state, like in Ennis and Sheridan, south of there, you can get to go up to the mountains to there and there's a road that leads up. I'm going to get rid of this tree in this picture because I don't like it there. It seems like it blocks the, pick, the snow bank. And so I've drawn it on watercolor paper. This is a 10 by 14 sheet. You could use whatever kind you'd like to. I have gone ahead and used masking fluid and poured it into a cup and use the color shaper to apply it to certain spots a couple of the snowbank areas and the road and there's a little cabin here that you can barely see in the reference so I've done that and I've chosen just four colors to work with I might add more later but I've got some cobalt blue I think they could use some cobalt blue plus some cobalt blue and quadacridone red for the sky and I'm going to, since this is forming a diagonal, kind of going to this cabinet, I'm going to try to keep the sky right through here at a diagonal. And Hansa Yellow Medium, if you don't have that color, Cad, Cad Yellow, even for the Quidacridone Red, Cadmium Red would work fine. Green Appetite. I like the Green Appetite. You can use other colors, shades of green, and like if you're using Hooker's Green or Windsor Green, you could add Burnt Sienna to them to get it to more olive -y color by adding that to it. But the Green Appetite plus the Cobalt Blue will make some of our dark greens. The red across there will take some Cordacridone Red and tone it down. Okay. My next step that I'm going to do is the before I do the sky I'm going to actually make a cover for this spot yeah I'll just do it that way because I don't want any splattering up here you can see here I usually keep my palettes I have two of them or the kind that shut and then I can make that many colors that I keep on it and I have them labeled so I know which are which but I have quadacridone red and cobalt blue here this is a little bit of remaining cobalt blue from another project I had I also have to the side a washcloth that I use to wipe off excess water sometimes and I have two rinsing glasses or just mason jars and I'm just going to put in a little bit of purple, a little bit of red. That's too much red, as you can see, because I turned it so much red. Rinse my brush, wiped it. I'm just in the habit of doing that. Probably should have put more purple in there. Okay, is that too bright? My opinion is yes, it is a little bit of bright, too bright. So I told you I was going to use Hansa Yellow Medium. This is actually the spot that I put that. And so I don't get purple into my thing, into my palette with this bright yellow. And I put some of the yellow to the side. And well, I might want to bring in a little bit of it. Why am I using yellow? Because it is the opposite of purple and it will actually help dull that down a little bit. And I actually like that a little bit better because it's a little bit duller. Okay. To do carefully is take my brush and splatter on some lupine. This would be one of many layers. I just dipped that my brush into water but didn't rinse it out completely. So 
So splattering can be fun. You usually just tap your your brush at the end. You can see from our references the blue color is all the way up here, but we cannot tell the shape of the flower like we can down here. So what I'm going to do is put some random purple patches. Actually, I need to wet this down with water a little bit. About halfway down your grassy area. And it can be hit and miss. But we don't want very hard edges. So soften the edges. Might not have very many much purple there, it might all be green, so the top there we will just keep that. Some of these patches. What we're going to do is mask over some of these areas and then later on put a green down. Get a smaller brush and actually just dot on a few more so that they look like Maybe they are, because lupines are spiky. They're, they're not spiky like spiky, but their shape is a spike shape, shape. So I'm going to try to make some that are spike shaped. And you don't have to follow the picture exactly. It's there's a reference, not as this, to be a slave to it. And this, by the way, this is one of my favorite brushes. It's a silver black velvet brush, size four. I like the shape of it. It's different than some of the other brushes I have. That looks like, like a little cluster. I like mixing the colors rather than doing a violet color because some of these you can tell like these ones here have more red in them than some of these other ones it seems like they're bluer so that gives it a variety like when I mixed it that one has more red in it I picked it up from a red spot can add more blue to some of the flowers. That one has a little bit more blue on it. That one. All right, I'm just gonna let that dry. Okay, now we still have the mix that we had of the cobalt blue and the quadacridone red and the teeny bit of yellow. And they also have a mix of cobalt blue. And it's fairly runny. 
Okay, I have a flat brush. And I'm going to wet the sky. And this is going to be dark here. So it doesn't matter that I wet down below it. Because that will be covered up with a darker color. So this is water just going on. All right. Sometimes you can turn your head and look at it sideways. I missed a spot over here. Just to make sure you got it completely covered. And I'm letting this sink in slightly so that I don't go right directly into it. I also have paper towels on hand because I might lift out some skies. Sometimes when I lift out skies, I'll use the edge of the paper towel. Sometimes I will crumple it up and do some dotting, but I told you I wanted that diagonal feel because it feels like it, there's diagonals in this painting. Okay, also want this area here to be darkest. I actually have some cobalt blue in my palette. From my previous thing, it has cobalt blue plus black. At least I think that's what it is. I'm actually going to do that corner dark with that. Okay, go in. Here's the sweeping motion. Okay. Here's the violet color. Okay, clouds are going to be flat down there. Don't take a whole lot. I actually think this violet color would have been better up here. And seems since my paper's on a slant, you can see the water's dripping down some. Which I don't mind the look of, but... Sometimes you can drag it. Sometimes, like I said, you ball it up. And once you're done, don't fiddle with it. Okay, now that that's done, I can remove this spot very easily by picking it off, and then I don't smear it since it's dried. I've mixed up in my palette some green appetite right here, and then also some. I made some of that some red color using mostly quadacridone red, but some. Ponza yellow and a little bit of cobalt blue and just mix it's a three color mix but it was mostly red to get like an off 
red, and then I've taken some of the green Appetite, thinned it out oh, quite a bit, and also added some of this red color that I mixed up and put it here in with it. So, we don't get a hard edge there. Okay, I'm going to take that thinned out green that has a little bit of red in it. I should need a bigger brush. Maybe switching to a size 8. And I'm picking up. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, put the green down first. All across here. And then I'm also going to drop in a few while it's wet. Just a few spots that are. I still have some cobalt blue in the palette, and it's got some of that quadacridone red in it, so it's like a purpley color. And see how the base of this mountain is purpley color? Actually, I'll let that blend in with the green. Dot a few spots there. And we have that same color down here. It has a lot of green on it still. But we really don't want a hard edge there. So I'm going to soften that off. Okay. And so instead of just being flat, we have color mixed in with that green. We have the red mixed in and the purpley color. So, and it's also faded back. I didn't use strong colors. I used my watercolor thin some so that I'd get it to recede back. Okay, I switched to a size 10. And I'm putting that ready color across here. Add some yellow to the green appetite for right here. It just seems like it needs to be darker red around here. So I'm going to darken my mix up a little bit, add more red to it. It's puddling here, so very carefully pull that up a little bit. Okay, back into the green appetite. It looks like lupine to me, which is fine. Looks like a patch of uh, flowers. Okay, I'm taking, I have a green appetite in one and cobalt blue plus green appetite in the other for a darker green. And also some Hansa yellow with green appetite. So I have three shades of green across the middle. I'm actually going to go in with a <clears throat> a 
it has the light color yellow with it. I'm actually going to put some of this back in as purple. Rinse my brush good. Keep this softened so we don't get hard edges. Since I took a minute, back into different shades of green. Went into the medium tone green. Now I'm back into the yellow shade of green. Might actually add some purple down down here too. Purple's actually looking like a dark green. This right here is a dark green. Back into the yellow green. And into the mid green. Back into the purple. Just a couple. Dots and dashes of purple. Mid green again. Put some yellow green across here. Some dark green. And then back in with some light green. See how the masking fluid is resisting and you're seeing the flowers come to life now. Light green up front. Back into some mid green. Put that purple color to some of these areas. Or just purple. Opposite colors on the color wheel my green appetite and my quidacridone red. My green and red make a very dark color. turkey color. And you want plenty of this mixed up so that you have enough to cover it. I'm going to test it out on a scrap piece of watercolor. It actually doesn't look too bad. Okay. Okay, you want to make sure your brush has a little bit of a point on it when you're doing this so that you can get the tops of the mountain ranges. They are smooth. There's little nibbies and knobbies sticking up. Here's where I'm looking quite a bit at my reference photo. Notice that this is a thicker paint than a lot of what I put on before. Trying to cover up my pencil lines for sure. If I need to go beyond where the pencil line is with this dark color. Okay, I'm gonna go above here. I'm gonna get, just so I don't rinse out all of what I have on my brush, I'm gonna get a different, different brush and soften this back. I'm actually going to what I did is I got a little bit of the color on my thing. I dabbed it on my washcloth. Let me show you. You got a little bit of paint on here. You dabbed it off some of the liquid. And then I'm putting my brush on the side to try to get a little bit of texture. 
you know how there's hills and valleys and watercolor paper it's hitting the hills. Okay. And then keep going here. Well, it's still wet. Do 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 do. Okay. I might just leave that naturally. It's kind of got a natural look to it there. Got to rinse my other brush. Soften this off some. Might drag it a little bit on its edge. We look at our reference here. This part's darker coming down. Get down to that snowbank. And then, taking my smaller brush, dabbing it again. This time I'm kind of dragging it the direction of the form of the mountain so that it looks like it's Some texture there. Looks like there's some green trees down in here that we'll put in on a. It's in the very foreground. We're going to put in some masking fluid to try to get the like grasses in the very front bottom section. So to do that, I'm going to get rid of my masking fluid that was in my container that was hard and dried. Put in some more. I'm going to use a mapping pen, which is right here. And since this is a little bit thicker masking fluid, I'm actually going to thin it a little bit so it doesn't get stuck in my prongs. Okay, see how that filled up with masking fluid? We're going to just go at the very bottom and just put in a few leaf shapes. And then I'm going to cover this up with a darker green. Okay, so you just drag. You have to fill it up every three little strokes or so. Give them character. Don't all make them all go the same direction, straight up and down. Some longer than others, some shorter variety. Since this is a major patch of flowers here too, I might do this one too. They of course will be shorter than the one at the bottom. Maybe a few here. Very dark browny color is I want to go right underneath the snowbank so that there's a little bit of shadow. Soften that off. Okay, here's my 
green apathite with the cobalt blue and I've added some of the red color that I used for the mountains to that to make it a dark. And I'm using a size 4 again. And see how all these mountain or these trees are like along here. And I'm going to do is put in an impression of trees. I'm going to get some of the water. And I do hit and miss. Kind of trees kind of curve up the hill. Like that's all I'm going to do on there so that I don't detract from other areas. But then down here in the foreground, see how there's a cluster of these? Basically what I'm going to do, some of these areas that I had masked, masked, excuse me. <clears throat> we want some darker greens. I also have green apathite on my palette. Some of the areas I'm also doing. Lighter color so that it looks like patches of colors of different shades of green, dark green, different tones. I want this patch to be really dark here. And this patch to be really dark here. Then I'm going to get some regular green appetite and soften this off. Put some uh, regular, just plain green apathite. I like that light green there, so I don't want to cover Next, that. Next, we can remove these areas that were masked. What I'm using here is just a rubber cement pickup. The road, the little cabin. Whether the cabin was in the picture or not, I do not know, but I put one there. Okay. I still have this wet down here, so I'm not going to mess with that at the moment. Later on, I'll remove that. But there were some shadows in. So that violet color, the cobalt plus the red, I just picked up a little bit of that. I don't want it too dark, but I want some of these. to be shadowed a little bit. Okay, doesn't take much. And I'm also going to just very lightly, I'm going to rinse my brush. That was just a little bit. Now I'm going to soften the snow bank so that there's a little shadow on the snow bank too. Give it a little bit of three dimension. I want it to be that a very light color <clears throat> of tone, so make sure it's thinned out well with water.
Not, not too much. That was too much. There we go. Like a peach. paint the road. Okay, that cabin's a little bit darker than that. I'm picking up that red that I have here. It's a little bit too dark. Adding some yellow to it. Adding some bright red. And some bright yellow. There we go. We wanted a medium tone so that it's not as late as that road was. And I might make the roof a green color. A piece of watercolor paper. And what I'm going to do is dip my the edge of it in watercolor and stamp on some leaves. So I just kind of collected it in my palette. So it's on the edge of this. You can curve your... I think that's a little bit too long, so I'll make them shorter. Remember, don't always make them all straight up and down. You can curve the piece of paper. Doing is just printing that small piece that I ripped off. I should do some small ones up here. I'm trying to go the direction of the curve that's in the front. Force some of those areas a little bit. Okay. Want the cabin. To be shaded on one side. I've removed the mask here and what I'm going to do is I have my purple two color mix of cobalt blue and light red. Remember I said there were yellow flowers here, purple flowers. Add more color to some of these areas with little dots.
I added some trees by taking the tip of my brush right along here and right along here and then I softened down below. I also darkened, like this one was really bright so I took some red and darkened it, darkened it so that there wasn't any whites in the shadows across here and across here. I darkened some of the whites with a, a light tone, kind of a purpley red color. And then I've also taken and done some splattering across there. And so now I'm done.